Have you ever needed to add a physical disk to your Proxmox server because you need to pass that device to a virtual machine? In this video, I will walk through the process of adding a physical disk to a Proxmox VM. There are several reasons of why you may want to do this, including using the VM to perform disk repair on a damaged drive, or just ran out of disk space and needed to add more. For this video, I'm going to be running the Proxmox Virtual Environment version 8.0.3, and the virtual machine that I will be running will be the Kane 13 Linux Distro. The external drive that I'm going to be connecting to my Proxmox server is a M2 SATA SSD hard drive enclosure. All right, so in my Proxmox admin GUI, I'm going to select the Proxmox server, and then the disks, and then I'm going to use a USB-C cable to connect the external drive to the USB-C port of my server. Now I should see a new device pop up, and if not, I just need to hit refresh. All right, and here I see the slash dev slash SDA device, which is a two terabyte SSD with two partitions. So I know that is the correct device. To connect this disk to the VM, I just need to select the VM, then hardware. From here, I can click on the add dropdown and then select USB device. Then I can choose the use USB vendor slash device ID radio button. And then for the choose device options, I'm going to select the Ugreen storage device as that is the manufacturer of the enclosure I'm using. And once it's selected, I'm going to click add. And then you should see this new device listed in the hardware section of this VM. So here it is. Note that if we went back to the Proxmox server and then click on the disk section, we no longer see the USB listed here as that device is no longer available to anyone but the Kane VM. So let's jump into our VM, bring up a console window. And from here, I'm going to use the ls block command to see if we have any newly added devices. And so what we see now is slash dev sdb as the external drive. And I can mount it and start to use it. So I'm going to do sudo mount slash dev slash sdb2 slash mnt slash hd. And it looks like I forgot to create the mount point, so I'll do that now. So I'm going to do sudo makedir slash mnt slash hd. And once I have that external drive mounted, I can change directory into the temp folder on that drive that I created before. So cd slash mnt slash hd slash temp. And here I'm going to use the dd command to write to a large file and see how long it takes. So I'm going to do time sudo dd if equals slash dev slash u random bs equals 1g count equals 10 and of equals big file. So essentially I am telling the dd command that I want to read from the slash dev slash u random device. So it's going to give me random ones and zeros. For block size, I'm going to use one gig and for a count of 10, so this is going to create a 10 gig file. And so it looks like it's going to take about 40 seconds at a speed of 264 megs per second. I'm going to try this again to make sure I get consistent results. And while it's running, I can tell you that it does make a difference if you change the block size. So if you have a 1K block size and you have 10 megs for a count, you will get the same 10 gig file, but it will be a little slower. So anyways, it comes back and looks like it's about 40 seconds again and the speed of 265 megs a second. So it's pretty consistent. So that's pretty decent performance, but I think we can do better. So let's clean up to get ready for the next section. So first I'm gonna change directory out of the mount point. So CD, and then I'm gonna unmount the disk from the VM. So sudo umount, slash mnt slash hd. Then I will disconnect the USB from the VM within Proxmox. I'm going to go back to selecting the VM here and then hardware and then select the USB drive. 
and then press the remove button. So basically this removes it from just the VM and it is allocated back to the Proxmox server as a whole. All right, so you will get to see how to get faster performance from that external drive. But first, you gotta help me out by clicking on that thumbs up icon to like this video. And while you're at it, please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and then click on that notification bell. It's not for the YouTube algorithm, it's actually to help me because I've always wanted to be like a scarecrow with an award. You know, outstanding in my field. Now let's see how we can get faster performance to our external drive. I'm gonna bring up the console window to my Proxmox server. I do that by selecting the Proxmox server in my browser and then clicking on the console. Then from inside the console window, I will need to install the LSHW tool, which is not installed by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and do apt install LSHW. Now I can use LSHW to see what storage devices are available. So I'm gonna do LSHW-class-disk-class-storage. And I see the USB drive that we just connected with the product and vendor info as well as the serial number. And under that is the underlying disk, which has its own product and vendor and serial information. And I also see the NVMe SSD that is the internal drive for my Proxmox system. One thing to point out is that the disk is associated with slash dev slash SDA, which we could use to connect to the VM, but we should not use names like slash dev slash SDA as those can change after a reboot, right? The reboot sequence could rename all the attached devices. So SDA could become SDC, SDB could become SDA and so forth. So we wanna use another identifier and this is the one that's under the by ID directory instead. So let's take a look at that folder by doing ls minus L of slash dev slash disk slash by dash ID. And we see here at the bottom here, the disk that we are interested is named USB Kingston underscore blah, blah, blah. And that is linked to slash dev slash SDA. All right, so next, let's go ahead and add the physical device as a virtual disk using the Kimu Virtual Machine Manager. And we wanna make sure that we're adding it to VM number 513, right? We wanna look back at the Proxmox webpage here and confirm that it is a VM number 513. That's my Kane 13 VM. And so I'm gonna type QM set 513-vertio2 and then slash dev slash disk slash by dash ID slash USB dash Kingston and then we hit tab so we can autofill. All right, so right here, instead of vert IO2, you could put SATA or SCSI, but the vert IO is the fastest driver available currently, so that's the one I'm gonna use. And so after I hit return, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a more of the VM configuration file just to confirm that it has added that external disk. So I'm gonna do more of Etsy PVE slash kimu dash server slash 513.conf. All right, so we do see that there is a line in here for vert IO pointing to that device. All right, so if you go back to the Proxmox GUI and choose the VM and then the hardware section, you will notice a new hard drive in here. All right, so let's get back into the Kane VM and we will use the ls block command to take a look at what we got. And so now we see that there is a slash dev slash VDA, right? It's not SDA anymore, it's slash dev slash VDA. And so the VDA stands for a para virtualized disk. And this particular disk driver is faster than the emulated SDA device that we used when we connected it as a USB devices. Uh, basically, there's less overhead in the operation of this para virtualized disk compared to the emulated SDA disk. So let's go ahead and mount it and test the speed. I'm gonna do sudo mount slash dev slash VDA2 slash MNT slash HD and then CD back into the same folder of slash MNT slash HD slash temp. 
And once again, I'm going to do time sudo dd if equals slash dev slash u random bs equals 1g count equals 10 of equals big file. And the time it takes to create a 10 gig file is now only about 36 seconds at a speed of 294 megs per second. And so I'm going to run it again to make sure that we have some kind of consistency of the results. And we do see that it is pretty much about 294 megs a second again. So this is about a 10% increase in speed, which is pretty good. Um, and so it's you know worth having to jump through the steps of going into the command line instead of just using the GUI to attach it. All right, so now that we're done, don't forget to clean up after yourself. So we're going to CD out of there and then do sudo umount slash mnt slash hd. Okay, and then from here, you can again remove the disk from this VM by going back into the Proxmox GUI and selecting that particular hard disk and then hitting uh, remove. But the, be careful here though, because you have an internal drive and this external drive. So make sure you're removing the correct disk. And so in the GUI, it is pretty easy to actually pick the wrong one. So you can actually do it via the command line, which I believe is safer in this case. So once we jump back in the command line, you can do QM disk unlink 513, right? Because 513 is the VM number. And then dash dash ID list vert io2 so what this is going to do is remove the vert io2 device which is our hard drive or external hard drive and then the system is going to come back and tell you that it did in fact delete vert io2 and if we do a more of the slash etsy slash pve slash kimu dash server slash 513.conf you will see that vert io2 drive reference gone and again, if you just look in the GUI, it should also be removed. So if you need to perform a disk recovery on a physical disk using a VM, or if your VM needs to have more temporary disk space, you can add a external hard drive to your Proxmox server and then pass through the physical disk to that virtual machine uh, using the techniques in this video. And if you want to maximize the speed of the drive, you should also explore using the driver that suits your needs. If you have come this far, here is another video that you need to watch. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.